Okay, I'm standing over here on my workbench with a new block of wood from Heineke uh, Lumber Company. This cost me $14.70 up there in Dayton uh, last October. Good wood. Nice and clean. I've got my pattern here for the bust and also the one for the uh, shield. Now these are, this is a three inch piece of wood thickness. My pattern is about six and six and a quarter wide by five and a quarter long. If you want to take a screenshot of this pattern, we can just snap a screenshot of it. And here's the shield that we'll be cutting later. The measurement on it is four inches diameter. And the length of it is to the longest piece of cloth five and a half inches. Inches. And like I say, it's four inches wide. And again, this one here is six and a quarter. By five and a quarter. Okay, alright, now, by the magic of videos, turn it over here, and I've already drawn my pattern on here. Now, what I've done here, is I've kind of played around with it, re-sketched it, added, added more wood to this. It's still six and a half wide, but it's grown a little here. So now this one, is six inches okay and what I'm going to do here is it's going to have a skin probably buffalo skin laying over one shoulder and the shield will be over here on this shoulder and I've kind of sketched it in here this up here will be a beaded strip. Have his necklace in there. His shoulder here will come down and this will be blocked out by the shield once we mount the shield on there, but it will have some detailing. This will have a fringe here coming down. Okay? Alrighty. On the side, I went ahead and done this. Like I say, it's a three inch piece. I cut in here cut up there and it cut out here alright now one thing when you're laying out patterns you get into situations where you have a dip here and a, you know things move when you're cutting it out stay stay outside the line a little it'll cause you a little extra whittling but one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to cut on the line of your design. Because if you do that, then you're going to be removing wood away from that line. And things become distorted when you do that. So stay outside your line. It takes a little extra effort. But that's what everything takes effort. So, you know, just get used to it. So, okay. I'm going to go over and cut this out and what I'm going to do after I cut it out is I'm going to go ahead and rough the block out off camera because I don't see any sense of uh, wasting a whole bunch of camera time while I sit over there and you know bring, bring the thing down to size okay but first we'll cut out this blank first of all I'm going to go ahead and cut out this square here 
so I don't uh, waste waste this wood. All right, so I'll be back here in a minute. Okay, I've gone ahead and I've cut my block out. Now I'm going to cut it out. Now remember, what we, when we cut, we want to leave all these tags on here. So when we flip it up and cut out the profile on the side view, we've got a nice square level surface to cut from, okay? All right, there we go. Okay, now we can pop these pieces off. These will be a little bit harder to do because uh, the grain's going up and down. So I'm going to have to get my knife and cut those. All right. So I'll see you. See you in a bit. Okay, like I've mentioned before, what I do on my saw because I'm very comfortable with this saw is I'll remove as much wood as I can on the saw here to save me from having to sit over there and uh, actually carve it away, okay? So again, if you're not comfortable with your saw and your tools or equipment, don't do things like this. I don't want anyone getting hurt and saying, well, what's his name said that this was okay, I can do that. No, I didn't say that. I said, don't do it, okay? this side here because this is where the robe is going to be so it'll be thicker all right
there. Now see, doing that will save me a lot of time. Might not save, if you don't know what you're doing, it might not save you a trip to the emergency ward. That's why I say don't do these things unless you're comfortable with your tools and equipment and you have a lot of experience in using them. Okay, so now we've got our block roughed out. We'll head over to the uh, carving station. Okay, back over here to carving station. Here's another uh, carving I'm working on at the moment. It's all finished except painting. This is sort of where we're going with the other piece. And the only difference between this one and that one is this one's going to have a, or that one's going to have a shield. And you can see the difference, the more involved the figure becomes when you add something like that, okay? All right. Now here's my blank here. And like I said, I roughed it down to where I'm getting ready to do the details, okay? I went ahead and finished the rest of the face here. So the face is finished. I've just indicated some hairlines on here just so I can see what's going on. I'm going to pose this guy looking in this direction. Alright, I never, I never try to pose them to where they're just looking straight ahead because they just don't look interesting to me anyway when they do that. If you tilt the head off to the side it adds interest to the piece because it, the person is doing something. This fella is doing something. There's something off over here that he's interested in. But one thing I wanted to show you is the difference between these two pieces. This piece and that piece were both cut out on the same, uh, same pattern. And like I said, I didn't follow the exact line of the piece around there. I left lots of excess. You know, I've carved off a lot of the excess on this piece here, but still there's a lot that still has to be taken off to get down to the final uh, shape of the piece where this one is now. The only thing that needs to be done on this one now is the detail, which is what, what's coming next, okay? So remember that. Don't cut on your pattern line. Allow yourself some slop, excess material on the outside of that line because you're going to end up cutting it away if you don't, okay? Alrighty. So we'll set that one side to lay. Now as you can see on this one here, I've indicated, well I've already outlined the, the hide that's going over his shoulder. It's got to still be detailed yet. I've indicated a bead strip over his shoulder as most Indian War shirts have. Here are my uh, fringe coming down from his shoulder and here's just a neck piece that I drew on there to give me a uh, idea of what's coming. And it will eventually have a choker choker piece which will go up here. Alright, so what do we do next? Okay, what I'm going to do next is the beading piece here, okay? This is one time you'll see me cutting straight into the wood. You won't see that very often, but this is one instance when I do that. One thing I like to do, I can find my little tool here. Just, just an old compass. I like to make sure that these strips stay the same width as we go up, up the piece. Right there, I can see that it's starting to get a little narrower. Make a little marks in there, that'll help me. Gets over here, it starts getting real narrow. So 
so I'll have to redraw my lines. Let's see if I can see their little points again. There's one. My hand's in the way. What do I do? There's the other one. Again, you saw my mistake, and they're out there laughing at me. Tie that together. This goes down to there. I'm going to bring this over. Like that. There we go. Now it's just a matter of carving up to that line because the beaded strip is not very thick. Okay, you can see where I'm going. I don't think you need to watch me do the rest here. Yeah, never mind. Let me just take a second. I'll get this other knife in there. There, we've got that one done. Not so concerned there because that's going to be carved away. Choker here also is relieved. This isn't actually a choker, this is a, just a neck decoration. Again, it's not very thick. something to get down in there. <laughs> Back and G up there.
Now for the shoulder piece, I'm going to start right there where I cut into it. And about the same distance away as as before. A lot of you say I jerk around when I carve, waving these carvings all over the place. That Judy can't keep up with me. Well, we're trying to cut that down. Hopefully we will. Okay, now on the beaded part, this is kind of humped here. See there how it comes comes up. Well, I don't like that, so I'm going to kind of flatten that out because it's a bead of strips are very, they're not very thin, but they're heavy because it's glass beads and they're not like, and they hold their shape. Much better. <clears throat> so there. Okay. Now, I'm going to draw me a line up here. This one will be going pretty well straight down. It's going to cut off right there. So I'm going to indicate where the fringe ends by making a line there. Okay. All right, 
Now a lot of this detail, once we put the uh, shield on there, is going to be hidden. But I go ahead and carve it on there anyway because uh, it's easier just to carve it than it is to try to carve around it. One thing you can do when you're doing things like this is carve a deep line around there to where when you take that chip, it's going to fall all there. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and do this and we'll come back in a bit. Okay, I've got my little gouge here. Pretty, pretty deep and narrow gouge here. And what I'm going to do now is Carve out the center of these fringes that gives it a little bit more interest. You can see I also put a point down on the end of the fringes just to get away from that straight line. See how much better that makes it look. Establishing my lines here. I always like to finish things up as I go along. That way, I don't have to come back later and you know, to clean it up. It's done. I can move on to something else. So there, it's looking pretty good. Now, figure out where that shield's going to go. What I will eventually do is I'll take this over and sand this area off right here so it's perfectly flat where I can mount that shield on there nice and solid. All right, but we're, we're quite a ways away from that yet. But real quickly, what I'm going to do now is just real quickly go over how to add a beaded texture to this strip. Make 
sure we've got all our surfaces fairly well even. By that I mean I don't want my the edge of my beaded strips to be thick and then thin and then thick again. That looks pretty good now. Okay. So over here on my burning tool, my little burning tool here, I use a just a little chisel tooth burning point. These seem to last the longest of any of them. And what I like to do before I start is uh, just kind of sharpen just a little. Because as you burn, over time, that heat will just burn away that real sharp edge, okay? Let me turn this thing on and get it heated up. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go across here, where it's starting to get heated up. Now if Judy moves in closer, she can see what it goes on. I just took, oh, I got away from it. That's too hot. I just go across, keeping my line square with the outside edges of the strip. Try to get all these little lines uniform if possible. If they're off a little, it's not going to matter. And then once that's done all the way around, I'll come back And do this, and that'll give me a you know a crosshatch uh, surface. It's real light. You don't want to burn it in too deep, and that will give me a crosshatch surface all across here to paint on. And as I paint, you know that these little burn lines don't absorb paint as much as the wood does. So you get a nice uh, a nice result. Okay. All right, I think that's going to be it for today. As you see, we're we're moving right along. If I can borrow the base of this all here. As you can see, when we're done, we're going to have a pretty impressive looking little figure here, especially once we get the braids on and the uh, feathers in his hair. All right? It's going to be nice. Guarantee it. Okay, till next time, I'll talk to you later.